Welcome to this tutorial on UKCAT abstract reasoning tests. I want to uh, suggest to you how uh, these questions might relate to the real world and give you some idea of how to go about tackling them. So the things uh, which uh, we're going to have a brief look at are uh, a suggestion of how real world scenarios are turned into these abstract pictures and why this is done. And then to help you get going, looking for obvious differences looking for something strange, uh, the need to get counting, and uh, secondary rules or why a given answer wouldn't fit. Okay, so let's have a look at uh, these two sets, uh, which uh, could show a biological system. Uh, now, you might be able to spot an obvious difference between set A and set B. In uh, set A, there are two clusters of dots, but in set B, there's only one cluster. Now, this is a reasonable distinction, and you don't need any specialist knowledge to spot this pattern. So we could go on to answer A, B, or neither for each of the options at the bottom. But hang on a minute. We haven't looked in detail at these examples, and we don't really know what these clusters actually mean. So without any kind of additional knowledge of the real-world system, we can't be sure that we haven't missed something else important. So to prevent this possibility, the elements are simplified and the noise removed to create abstract sets. And now we can be more certain that there's nothing else going on which might we might have missed. There I've drawn in the number of ovals in each of the set, and then looking at the test patterns, it's quite easy to see which set they would fit into. However, the pattern spotting has become a little bit too easy, which you might not think is a problem, but unfortunately the examiners do. So we could have a slightly more complicated example. And uh, once again, you might be able to spot an obvious difference between set A and set B. If not, I would regard the dots as uh, something strange and therefore something to look at carefully. And in uh, set A, the dots seem to be outside the cluster, and in B, the dots seem to be within the cluster. So once drawn as abstract shapes, these differences might seem a bit more obvious. And whilst we're getting towards uh, a possible abstract reasoning question, it's still probably a little bit too easy in the abstract form. To increase difficulty, some number pattern is often introduced. This means that there's an increase of complexity and there are an infinite number of questions that can be asked by the examiners. Unfortunately, it does mean that we move further away from the real world, but this is how these abstract reasoning tests work. So to spot the pattern in these two sets, you're going to have to do some counting. If you want to pause and think about this, this would be a good time, otherwise let's carry on. The dots I would still regard as uh, something strange, so uh, let's see when they appear. And in uh, set A, they're appearing when there's one, three, one, one or three boxes present. Whereas in set B, they're only occurring when there are two boxes present. So we could come up with this uh, rule, that where there's one or three boxes present, and a dot, it is set A, whereas if there's two boxes present and a dot, then it's set B. And there I've marked on the answers according to this rule. So where we've got one box and one dot, it's an A. Where we've got two boxes and uh, a dot, it's a B. And if we've got uh, two boxes but no dot, it's an A. And uh, if we've got two dots in a box, well, we haven't seen that before, so that's a neither. But sadly, I've actually got one of these patterns one of these answers wrong and I'm going to suggest that when you have a test pattern and you've come up with a rule think is there a reason why this given answer wouldn't fit so why would this first test pattern here not fit into set A and you may have already picked up on this but there was one box and two bundles of lines whereas in set A there was always the same number of boxes and uh, little bundles of lines Therefore, this first answer here it does not belong to A. In fact, it's a neither. 
So in set A here, I've uh, written on both the numbers of boxes and the numbers of bundles of lines, and we can see that there's always the same number of boxes as there are bundles of line. In fact, the same is the case in set B as well. Now, you may have picked up this uh, pattern previously, or have thought about this some other way. But what I'm trying to point out is that there's often a secondary rule to watch out for. And I think a good way to watch out for this is always to think why uh, a test answer wouldn't fit into the set which you've assigned it to. OK, let's uh, generalize a bit. Ideally, you see an obvious difference between the sets. Uh, if you can see it, then great. Uh, but if not, then I'll bet that there's something strange in there to have a look at. Something a little bit odd, uh, which is probably the key to finding the pattern. Because of the nature of these tests, get counting. Don't put it off. Just start counting the numbers of sides or angles or shapes or funny dots or curved edges or what, whatever stands out as being worthy of looking at in detail. And then finally, once you've uh, got some kind of rule and are assigning answers to the test questions, just make sure that they definitely fit into the set. You may well find some secondary rule. OK, that's enough for me. Do get practicing and uh, enjoy puzzling over these tests. Bye for now.